tired. <laughs> and like, yeah. or my back, I'm so used to sitting hunched over. You are now listening to <laughs> Art 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 Podcast <laughs> with Jonathan Wolf and me. If you will. I am ferocious. <laughs> I'm we Jonathan. Both, <laughs> we both host this. <laughs> so it's gonna get easier, man. This is this is great. I love it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're back. How are you, man? I'm awesome. I I literally it's twelve it's noon. Haven't done anything today. I woke up at six AM. I'm going to work hard today. I'm up early. You know that, you know, like those cheesy Instagram, like wake up really early and grind. I was feeling like that. But then I was like, I'll go back to sleep. <laughs> and then I just woke up so Bro. we could record. So that's how yeah. I'm doing. <laughs> how are you, JW? Yeah. <laughs> we had very similar mornings. Um, <laughs> yeah, I slept in. I don't know why today I slept in as well. But uh, yeah, this is like the first thing I've done all day. It's almost one where I'm at and, you know, I haven't done much. But usually after these, like I'm really like pumped up and I'm motivated to get stuff done. So do you ever you find in? yourself kind of wasting the day because, you know, you'll work better at night? Yeah, I I don't like that. I, <laughs> I'm trying to become a morning person or at least like do my work in the morning. But I don't know. Something about me just loves staying up till like five and just when no one's up, it's so quiet, you know. I like it because if I go on Twitter, no one is really on, so I can't interact. Um, yeah. Before, like my family was awake, so they would bother me in the day. <laughs> so, or like nobody's texting me, nothing, just straight. Yeah, I'm alone. I have to work right now. Uh. I feel like. When I stay up super late, though, I'm really productive and I get a lot done. But I feel like guilty and like weird about it. It's like, oh, I should be sleeping right now. Like this isn't good for me, you know? It's not. <laughs> no, it's really not. That's I've when been... the magic happens, bro. <laughs> I know, but then you get like six hours of sleep for a week, and then you like crash, <laughs> <laughs> and then you waste a whole day sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not even worth it. Yeah, I think I'm going to like start, I don't know, with school, it's so easy to become like a morning person working in the morning and all that. So I'm just going to like force myself to wake up at like seven or something and just like sit in my studio half awake, try to make something. That's hard though. I feel like I'm not the kind of guy that can wake up and go make art. I have to like... yeah marinate in my feelings and my acceptance that I'm awake in the day and then right. later I can work. Yeah. I'm kind of that way. I don't know though. I had a really good run last summer, like almost exactly a year ago. I made, do you remember the crosswalk God, the yes. really big one? Yeah. I made that at just about a year ago and I'd wake up at like six thirty every morning and I would just be so excited to wake up. Because I could go paint now, right? So I'd, that was like the easiest thing for me to get out of bed. It was like, oh, I'm awake. I can paint now. And I, I want to get back to that point. I, that's just such a fun place to be in, you know? Dude, that just made me feel so lazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, dude, that's I, it. It's not like I'm like that right now. Like, <laughs> yeah, but you, That comes in phases. You had that experience at a point. Now I feel like I... Dude, there was one time I woke up at 4 a.m., and it, like a burst of inspiration happened and I painted my heart away. Um, sometimes when that happens now, I'll write it down and go back to bed because I'm tired. <laughs> but I feel like I'm <laughs> I feel like I'm missing something by not forcing myself to get up. Right. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I do think working myself so so much kind of made me scared to experience those mm -hmm. moments because I've kind of yeah. 
had those like I've been awake three days and I'm dizzy. Uh. <laughs> um, totally, yeah, and I don't know. Maybe we've done it so much now that it's kind of like, like eh, I'll get to it later. It's kind of lost the charm in a way. Maybe yeah, that sounds bad. Painting Dude, definitely we're so young. Lost the charm, but I know, right? <laughs> we're getting old, man. I can't even can't even stay up past four now. <laughs> no, just I, kidding. Like, I don't know. I don't even know. I feel like I've this conversation is so weird to think about because I've never thought about this. Yeah, it is weird. <laughs> <laughs> I feel really inspired, though. Like, I feel like I need to do more. I yesterday, not yesterday, the day before yesterday. Um. Nathaniel Paratism, his friend Curran came to Washington and they're oh, at my sick. house. And he was like, I've never painted before. Can we paint together? So I got a big, like huge canvas, like bigger than me. And we all, me, him, Nathaniel painted on the canvas. And it was my first time painting something like just cause, cause I've just been working on projects and yeah. thinking about oh is the collection cohesive blah 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 but it was the first time I just painted for no reason like just because he wanted to like whatever and in doing that first of all I realized how bad my health is because <laughs> I was like Ugh, I'm tired <laughs> and like or my back I'm so used to sitting hunched over but my body felt loose and I was just putting paint down. We were spray painting and I felt alive. I felt so alive. <laughs> JW. JW, is your internet? Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> is your. Hold on. You're, you're a robot for me. No. Wait. Oh, you're back. You're back. Is it? It's my internet. My internet says my connection's unstable. No, well, mine doesn't, so I, it probably is your internet, but that's like a first. It's all, it's always my internet. Dude, I was telling you this passionate story about how much I love art <laughs> in my internet. I heard it. Nah. Oh, that's too bad. But yeah, like, that's a great point, though. Like, we're working so hard on, like, projects and collections and drops that we're not really making a whole lot of stuff just for us most of the time, right? Mm -hmm. so like that's funny you mentioned that because last night i just felt like drawing dinosaurs I <laughs> so i drew like i drew like a t-rex eating a t-rex and it was so fun like it has no purpose I'm not trying to sell it or anything it's just for fun and i think that's super important to do just like keep some stuff just for fun dude drawing stuff just because and especially painting when I had to move around, yeah. I felt my, my shoulders crack, my elbows crack, my wrists crack. Like I just felt like I crawled out of my skin and I don't know, I feel way more alive from doing that. Um, and I, I think it, that moment kind of changed my life where I was like, ah, oh, you got to just take time to express yourself. And uh, yeah. I don't know. Dude. That's awesome. I'd love to hear that. Um, I know when I'm on my iPad, like drawing like that all day, and then I go down to my studio and I'm like standing, moving around, painting on a canvas. And then like, you know, I'm listening to music. I'm like dancing a little bit or something. Totally different experience, right? So I want to shift towards that more, more mm. physical moving. And also for me, you know, my dream, I have this big Wacom, but my big, like, I need Apple to make an iPad as big as that canvas bigger than me. <laughs> like, that's what Dude. I need. Could you imagine? And you wouldn't even have to zoom. You could just like look real close at it. <laughs> yeah. That's a really, I don't think that will ever happen, but I want it. <laughs> What if they make like a limited edition Dude, just for artists? <laughs> it's like five foot by four foot. It's like a whole Dude, hold on. That Forget would Apple. Amazing, Dude, though. let's make our own company. Bro. 
We could call it. Uh oh, the internet break again? <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Froze on the funny dude. Oh my Lanta. Oh, you're back, I think. Let me turn my internet off and back on. I are we still recording? Hello? It says recording. Okay. Whoa. I just turned my internet off and back on and we're still talking. How did how does that work? I don't know. <laughs> I thought for sure I'd have to invite you back. <laughs> well, anyway. We're back. <laughs> what are we talking about? Oh, giant Making, iPads. You know, yeah. wall-sized iPads. You, I mean, maybe at that point, just like buy a canvas. But I love the idea. <laughs> Would you ever make a mural? Yeah, dude. I don't even know why, but like I've been trying to do that for a couple years now and I've had no luck. Like someone in Calgary, if you're listening, just let me paint your building or something. Like just give me a building to paint on. Dude, <laughs> I come would love to. to Seattle. There's yeah. so many murals and dude, guess what happened? The first day, like my hair used to be longer, right? Um the first week I was in Seattle, I got my hair cut, my hair shorter, it looks crazy. And <clears throat> I was talking to the lady and she was cutting my hair and she was like, oh, what do you do? And I was like, I make art. And she said, oh, cool. What kind of art? I didn't know how to answer that. <laughs> and then she said, I heard about these things called NFTs. And I said, oh, I make those. She said, oh, and she Googled, she found my Instagram and was like, is this you? And I said, Whoa. yes. And she said, oh, want to paint our, bu- <laughs> wow, <laughs> our building? That's sick. And I said, sure. And she said, okay, next time you come back, like, we'll talk about it. Sure. They're like, literally do whatever you want. I guess when you put it that way, like, I probably could try a bit harder. I could like hit up some businesses or whatever and be like, Hey, like, dude, have you tweeted about it? I have, I've definitely tweeted about it, put it out there. So I don't know. I think it's going to happen in in the next like year or two. Dude, you paint big dinosaur. (laughs) Bro. I'll paint a 12 foot dinosaur eating a Mm. smaller dinosaur and it just keeps going. Until like the last dinosaur is literally like this big. <laughs> Be pretty cool. Dude, I'm <laughs> on board with like I think your art is perfect for a mural. Especially the colors, man. You have the best yeah. Co- like I would never make art really, at least not now that uses the colors that you do. Cause in my brain, that doesn't process to me. I'm a big primary guy. But you do it in a way that makes sense. That's why I love your art. Cause it's just so foreign to me. Colors wise, or I like that. You don't completely fill things in sometimes. I'm like, Whoa, you're crazy. You can just, you could just do that. <laughs> yeah. Having fun with it. What do you mean by uh, my colors? I find that like, really interesting. I don't know. I'm just more super saturated, super vibrant, right. primary. And yours is more like pastel, CMYK, like just yeah, so different. And I yeah. love it. That's cool that you mentioned that because in a couple of my more recent pieces, I've been doing the the classic uh, color wheel stuff, like the super saturated like primaries, mm-hmm. you know, kind of inspired by you. So it's cool that it's like going full circle, you know, I'm trying everything out. But oh man, I, I saw you that. use purple one time and I was like, ah, <laughs> I got to figure out how to use purple. I'm so scared <laughs> of purple. Dude, purple's tough. It's hard. Because I see purple. I'm like, well, why? I'll just use blue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but purples are important. I yeah, I feel like purple is a really beautiful color, but it's honestly hard for me to use. It, I don't, it just comes off as tacky sometimes. It's hard to explain. 
color talk. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What color is math? Math? Math is like probably like a gray blue, like a really gray blue. Mm. When I think of math, yeah. I think red. Oh, that'd be a good one too. Yeah. yeah. Pain, suffering, <laughs> agony. Blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> That's great. Dude, speaking but, of colors and stuff, like all my favorite art is art with super like primary. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so when you look at a piece or like for me, I'm so bad at asking questions. Wow. We have a podcast mm-hmm. and I can't ask the question. <laughs> um, when I look at art, I like when they take a person and make it look weird but it doesn't look like they were trying so hard to make the person look weird. It was, this is truly how I feel. So naturally the person's going to look a little bit weird, not going into how do I make it look weird? So my question to you is what's really stands out to you when you look at art? That's a great question. I think the obvious one is color. I think I'm, I, my, all-time favorite thing in a painting is like you have like a huge gray canvas or something like a nice like blue gray canvas right Mm. and then like there's like a little treat of color like a little bit of rainbow oh that is my all-time favorite thing right (laughs) just like kind of restricting the color so it, it becomes a treat a bit and this is kind of interesting i don't think i've ever told anyone this but um my like little people drawings, like the mm-hmm. little blob guys. I've been doing those for like six years now or something crazy. But originally, um, they started from a painting. It was this gray. I don't know if this was the first one, but I remember like it really clicked. This painting, I did it and I was like, oh, I want to keep doing these people. Like, I love it. It was a gray background with a mushroom. It was like this big mushroom, right? It was a really cool painting. But the mushroom was brown and the background was gray. And I was like, this is so boring. Like, I need some color. So then I made, like, these little rainbow blob people. And that was the only reason I added them, just for a little bit of treat, like a, a treat of color, right? It's just crazy that it's kind of stuck now. You know, it's like my thing that people know me for. What made you not give those little people a face? Um, Again, it was just, like, they were kind of supposed to be placeholders almost. like oh, I'll draw a blob guy and then I'll paint his clothes on and his face later. But then I painted all the blobs. It's like, oh, this looks pretty cool. Like why give them a face or like anything? Like, I don't think they need it. When you do the colors, do you associate each little dude having an emotion or it's just like fun? <laughs> yeah, no, honestly I do. Like I see like the yellow and like pink, greens. It's kind of like the happier people. And then I'll do like a dark blue if it's like a bad guy hiding in like an alley or something, you know, like. I didn't know that. <laughs> sometimes. So most of the time it's just random, but sometimes like, oh, this is like a creepy forest. I'm going to make like a, a a weird, like yellow gray guy here or something. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. I like that. What about, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess the first thing. I guess it draws everyone in is color for me. And then, I don't know, I guess composition is really interesting too. Is it interesting? Do people find composition talk interesting? I don't know. but Well, it is very it. interesting to see an artist. Like, you inspire me a lot. And I want to know how you look at a painting. Right. And just how you analyze it. Um, because everybody's different. Yeah. Like, for yeah, you... I see so much movement and stuff going on. So composition would be a big deal for you and like how people interact and stuff. Yeah. Especially with like the more detailed, like cityscapes. It's like, I kind of have to figure out like the perspective, like who's viewing this, like where, who is the view of like when it's a city, is it like, am I looking at this cityscape from another building or is it a person on the street? And then all that stuff around it. That's a really good question. What about you? For composition-wise or just in general? 
just in general, like you see a painting, like what draws you in? Um, it's how it made me feel like how did they show the emotion? Right. Um, because like, I just love emotions and all my art is like so emo <laughs> and sad. And maybe I didn't draw the best mouth or maybe I didn't do the best job, whatever. But to me, the most important thing is like, how can I make you like, if I'm drawing about something that happened to me, how can I make you feel yep. like you were there? Like my favorite experience or feeling is when you watch a sad movie and it just gives you this like, Oh, yeah. super intense feeling. So I want to get as close to that as I can with the painting. And I see right. how for some people it's hard because it's still and stuff, but at least with NFTs, like I can animate a little bit and yeah. utilize technology to push as hard as I can to make you feel that through my art. So yeah, just any yeah. art that makes me feel like, Oh, I have, oh. <laughs> that's what I look for. Totally. Yeah. There's a lot there. Like to talk about the NFT part or the tech part, like even just adding a little bit of movement or some sort of soundscape in the background that like emerges people so much. Right. And then, yeah. Like if you're trying to paint an emotion, it's not always going to be beautiful or aesthetically interesting or pleasing, I guess, but like, that's kind of the fun part. Like if you're trying to paint something that's not beautiful, like you're kind of freeing yourself almost to make something yeah. weird and just to bring people in. Right. Um, when I make like uh, kind of like a, like a building painting and people are like, Oh, like I wonder what it would be like to live in there. And like, I just know like these people are like thinking about like walking around in this little like plastic world I made. Like that is, that's a really cool compliment that I get. That, that one stands out to me. I love that you draw buildings and stuff and make it to me. If I saw a painting of a plain old building, I mm -hmm. will be honest. I don't think I would be so attracted to it. I'd be like, cool. But you, <laughs> this is what, dude, this is why you blow my mind so much. Like you draw stuff I would never really care about and make me care about it, Yeah, which is crazy. And you draw buildings and add like the little cracks or do graffiti or do someone like, I don't know. Like, it's just so cool. I don't know. That's, that's an amazing <laughs> point. You just made me realize that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That kind of started in university. I would like, I went through a phase where I was like drawing telephone poles I don't know. Like, I guess my neighborhood has a lot of them and they felt really nostalgic to me in a weird way. They're this like kind of forgotten thing, but like everyone can relate to them. Like everyone's seen one. Um, so by doing that, like all my teachers were like, okay, like why telephone poles? Like, are you like kind of weird? Like you have to explain why that matters to you. So like, I guess from that, it was mostly just like, everyday things that people see but we don't really acknowledge because like why why would we talk about power lines it doesn't make sense but like you can take a picture of a power line make it into a cool painting like it kind of shows like anything can be interesting or art or i don't know i just love the idea of like like isn't that crazy like you can take a picture of like gravel and make like a whole little world out of like little rocks on the ground. Like something about that just makes me want to like slow down and like appreciate like the small things going on. Like, I don't know. I think that's where that comes from, but honestly, I still don't know. It just feels natural. So I do it. <laughs> You've certainly made me appreciate street signs more. Like yeah, I look at all of them awesome. now. I look at, I don't know. I, I do look at things more now. And in that, right. do you ever feel yourself not being mad? I don't know the right term, but just, ah, I'm always looking for something all the time. Right. Mad. You mean like crazy or like, what do you mean like, by mad? I don't know. Like, 
for me, it's kind of hard to watch movies because I'm like, mm. I'm always trying to analyze it. Yeah. Or for me, I'm like, I'm going to go for a walk, but not to appreciate. I'm like, I want to go for a walk so I can look at everybody, look at the houses, look at the yeah. car, like everything. It makes it more fun. Like I used to be really into graffiti. So now like that was years ago, but it's still like ingrained in my brain. Like if a train passes by and I'm biking, I'll like stop, take a look at the train, look at all the cool art on it. And like all the patches of graffiti that was painted over and just like, I don't know. I feel like it makes you more present when you're like, I don't know. I'm going to walk around the neighborhood and look for cool street signs. Like you're not thinking about stuff that stresses you out. You're like there thinking about something very niche and odd, but you're still present. And I think that's awesome. Dude, I was going for a walk and, (laughs) oh, so there was an Amazon truck and some guy getting out of the Amazon truck, dropping off the packages. And I was walking and I just stood there and I was staring at, the, I like, didn't realize how crazy I looked wearing my pajamas <laughs> in the, it was raining and I didn't have an umbrella. <laughs> I was wearing pajamas and Uggs and just like looking at the Amazon <laughs> truck. And I was thinking about Amazon and all the packages and like <laughs> all of that stuff. I was looking at the houses. Um, and just like looking at these people's house or if the window was open, I wasn't trying yeah. to <laughs> like th- this lady was eating cheese and her, she had a beautiful house, like huge, amazing, had money, <laughs> like a big house and her big, super big window was wide open and she was eating cheese. And I was looking at it <laughs> and I was on my walk <laughs> and I wasn't looking at her like to be creepy. It was just yeah. like, I was like, wow, this lady's in her house eating cheese. Like, I wonder where she got the cheese. Is that she's a gift? Like, what is her job that she has a cool house? <laughs> like, I was just thinking all that. And then she saw me and she was like, <laughs> and then I realized, oh my God, I'm just being weird. <laughs> and then oh I walked God. away. <laughs> So that's my experience with that. (laughs) I think being like that, though, a bit more curious, like it really helps me with my art because I'm like, what would a T-Rex or no, like that T-Rex drawing. I keep it's like a throwaway drawing, but I keep talking about it. But I read an article and it was like um, during the T-Rex days, like there was like two billion T-Rex living at once. And I was like, dude, billion. what would two, two billion I think that's a lot of T-Rexes. Bro, that's what I thought. And I was like, could you imagine? That's way more than I T-Rex? thought. Yeah. But like I was like, what would two billion T-Rex look like? So I was just drawing dinosaurs. Like, <laughs> this is what two billion T-Rex would look like. And yeah, I think just like I don't know, being curious is like so helpful to be an artist. That's so cool. I also like it because yeah. You look at dinosaurs and you think of childhood, but when it's yeah. actually like a real thing, like <laughs> like <True>. science and <laughs> history, uh, I like that. Fiwo. Yes. I didn't change this topic. Okay. I got you something. What? <laughs> it's been in it's been in view this whole time. I was out shopping not too long ago. I know you. Uh, what did you get me? You like your art books, and I saw <gasps> a Canadian legend. Got this for you. Oh my god, dude! Ed Monkman, dude! Yeah. I was telling you about him. Yeah, dude! I was so hyped when you knew about him because oh he's god. a Canadian, right? Yeah. He got um. Look at that oh my god! I was like Chief Eagle Testicle. That's so fire! I was yeah. fanboying to you about how cool his art is. <laughs> Yeah. His art is crazy. crazy. If y'all ha- don't know who yeah. Kent Monkman is, like his art will be normal people existing and then a helicopter, <laughs> like a crazy, like, and, and yeah. it's really symbolic of his, tri- like totally. his heritage and stuff. It's Extremely awesome. symbolic. Yeah. Yeah. So I saw this, I had to pick it up for you. It's so cool that you knew about this like Canadian artist. So yeah, 
Dude, coming your way. I don't. I you. I bought this from you. <laughs> True. Hey, that's a gift, right? Over there, I have an original painting I bought from you. I love it. I'll Classic. Dude, I'll be working and I'll be like, oh, I'm stressed. And I like to look up at my ceiling and pretty high up. I got your painting there. Dude. And it inspires me. It's amazing. Like I've spent way too much money on art recently, but it's worth it. Like you got that big boy up there. That was like my first big art purchase, like big art purchase. The fucking gallery that I bought it from. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they gave me the wrong tracking number. <laughs> oh my god! So it said it was delivered in a different province, and I was like, "Hey, I, I spent a lot of money on this. Like, are you sure it's in Quebec right now? Like, what's up with that?" But what they say? It. Were they like, "My bad"? <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> that was stressful though. I kind of blocked it out. But uh, dude, yeah, to go back to. Oh no, you go. You know about the other day we were looking at prints or art you wanted. Oh, you wanted to buy original art, but they only had prints yeah. available. And you were showing me all these print websites and I saved all of them. I'm planning to go through one day to like buy prints from all those artists. Hell but yeah. you know, you remember so many names of artists. It blows my mind. <laughs> it's like, I what? think that's art school. Like, you have to write essays about these people and talk about them and study them. So, you know, shit on art school all you want, but like you get exposed to a lot of beautiful art. So that's where that comes from. But essays, man, I don't want to write an essay. Bro, I just got finished um, writing a 6,000 word essay. About what? Um, Boring shit. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't really even art related. It was more like design related. I don't even know why I took the class. I'm not even in design, but what's the class? <sighs> I'm done it, so I don't even remember now. It was like art history about something with the environment and design, but it's already escaped my brain. Too busy. <laughs> well, on a more exciting note, JW. Jonathan Wolf, Mr. Jonathan Wolf has a nifty drop. <laughs> That's when why um, I don't drop? remember any of the essay because I've been working on, uh, on that drop all day or oh all God. month. <laughs> When's the drop? It's, uh, April 29th. April 29th. I think it's a – can't remember what day it is, but it's April 29th, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody I remember feel- April 29th? Tweet about it, share about it, support the boy because Hell yeah. you work hard, man. Like, thanks. You man. told me you started over. Like, what what happened? <laughs> I was making a body of work, and just looking at it, I was like, "This is okay. Like, this is cool. It looks like stuff I've done before. It's cool." Um, but then I was like, "This isn't my best work. Like, I could do better." And it just didn't feel right. Like I wanted this to be like my best work for sure. Like when I looked at it, I was confident. I would see it like, yeah, I'm super proud of this. I'm going to go with it, but I wasn't feeling it. So yeah, I scrapped the whole project, you know, um, not too long ago, (laughs) but I think it's been worth it. Like the work I'm creating now is a lot more fulfilling. It's, it's new to me. It's kind of like pushing where I was with my art to like this weird new place. Whereas like before the work I was doing was kind of like coasting along doing the stuff I do, you know? So it wasn't as interesting. I wasn't challenging myself. It's just like filling in the blanks, you know? What was the mindset art wise, like color, like all of that going into like, okay, I have a nifty drop. Here's my date. What was your mindset going into that? Stress. (laughs) I think um I don't know. It it's it sounds crazy but I think I was really stressed so I couldn't really think too clearly, right? Oh my god. <laughs> Did you? $20 mic stand. Oh my god. <laughs> we have the Caught same. On camera. <laughs> when you said buy a nice mic stand, I was like there can't be a difference in quality. Guys, everyone listening. 
I was tell- helping GW buy his microphone, his webcam. And then I told him, don't be like me. I bought the $20 mic stand and it's really bad and it keeps breaking. <laughs> and you said, ah. <laughs> Uh, I'm glad that's on camera. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Try to watch out for my homie. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry, man. Next time, next time. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> um, dude, I think I was stressed because it was like my first nifty drop alone. Like I didn't have the group of guys, you know? So I was like, I don't know. Like I was just like, okay. Like, just got to breathe. It's going to be okay. And I feel like that really restricted my work a lot. I honestly, like not, I was just kind of like trying to make something amazing, you know? Mm-hmm. But then by doing that, it wasn't like authentic to me. It was like, Oh, what would be amazing? Not like, what do I want to make? You know? So maybe the previous work I did would do really well and like make a ton of money, whatever. But it didn't feel good. I didn't like it. So I'm super happy. A little sneak peek. Yes. yes. More clay people. I'm back on the clay. Yes. But I've been loving it. I love that. So has your clay usage for this project been different? Like, how have you gone about that? Yeah, a lot more ambitious. With the first Nifty Drop, it was like one central object that was made out of clay. And then I built up on it. But now it's like these pieces have like 10 to 15 individual little clay elements, right? That I like repurpose and I'll take like multiple photos of one. So then I can like, you know, reuse them, recolor them and all that, save some time. But yeah, super, I was going to say, yeah, just like a lot more usage of it. Whereas like before it was like really limiting. So everyone listening, could you explain like how you use clay yeah. in your artwork? Totally. Yeah. So I just get this like really cheap stuff. I don't even think you can bake this. It like always stays kind of soft, but it's, I don't know. I like the texture of it. So I use it. It like captures my fingerprints really well, which I like. Um, yeah. So I'll make a little clay object. I'll make a, I don't know, maybe a blue boy like this, this cool eyes. And then it's super simple. I'll get my little, my, my white backdrop piece of paper. And then I have this pretty complex lighting system. You know, it's, it's my desk light. Oh. <laughs> I think I'm going to say the sun. <laughs> yeah, that too. That's, that's good lighting. But um, that's probably the hardest part is because I have to picture where these pieces are, are going to be before I make the work. So the lighting's all the same. But yeah, once I figure that out, I'll just photograph it on my camera. Some If it's really small, even just my phone will work. Yeah, and then I crop out the background, edit the colors, edit the background. And then, yeah, I can add it to my work. And I don't know. It's It's been so much fun. It's like an authentic way to use 3D elements in my work that's not using like a program. Because like, I don't know how to use programs. <laughs> I think it was a brilliant point when you talked about how 3D artists have their assets. Well, like they'll have a house yeah. that they use in tons of pieces and yeah. you're creating like your own portfolio of assets to put in art. And I think I've never seen that happen before. I think it's genius, man. Thanks, man. Yeah. Like you see people killing it, mm-hmm. but like, do you think a traditional painter could like produce work that quick? Mm-hmm. I don't think so. Like, you and there's a lot of debate around like should you even be making work every single day like that sounds exhaustive and boring or whatever but um i just i do want to make more work different totally for me i couldn't make work every single day but uh this at least allows me to work faster Mm -hmm. you know so yeah um yeah all because of the nifty drop the the fabricated fairy tales one like that's where I got the idea from it. And it's crazy because I don't see myself stopping this style. It just, it just feels right, you know? So it's, that doesn't happen often too, you know? Usually you find your styles or your um, mediums pretty early and you stick with them. Like some people will just use oil paint their entire career. So finding a whole new medium is like incredible. 
has finding this new medium now open your brain to like, oh, what could be next maybe? Totally. Yeah. Like before I was only doing painting and now like I'm using clay and I'm taking photos of it and I'm editing it digitally. So it's like, why don't I like make something out of Lego, photograph that, manipulate it, or like find a cool stick and like photograph that. Like that's fire. Yeah. It's been insane. Really opened my eyes to like, there's more to life than gouache paint. (laughs) I'm so hyped for this nifty, nifty drop. Like you're one of my favorite artists in life. Like you've, especially getting to know you, man, you've taught me so much and you are just such a good painter and like you just experiment and you're not afraid. And I love it. And I'm excited for the world to, to me, it's like a big show, like a gallery showcase, you know? Yeah. Um, That people get to have your NFTs. Dude, I just bought some digital frames. I'm going to buy nice. some of your drop. I'm so hyped. Dude, thank you. Yeah, it's going to be... Um, I don't want to give away too many details, but there's going to be something for everyone, I think. That's been the my goal going into it. Although I do have to create a lot of work for that, but I think it'll be okay. But I want everyone to be able to show up and grab something for you know, an affordable price. So I'm really excited about that. And thank you, by the way. That's... It's not a very casual compliment. That's huge. I, I really appreciate that. Dude, I have this. <laughs> this is so precious to me. Look at this. It says, Bro. thank you. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> one one day I'll get a Fiwo. My biggest regret is not buying them, like your last painting drop before I <laughs> <laughs> For $90. Isn't that crazy? Bonkers. Dude, my regret is not buying more of your art. But also, dude, I remember I sold X amount of prints that week. And before I would never spend money because I'm like, I need to move out. How am I going to? I can't spend money. But that week I was like, I don't care that I'm spending. Like, I'm going to buy this JW painting. Dude, I know he's going to be you. famous one day. <laughs> and it'll pay off. <laughs> and dude, now you're my homie. Like so much is yeah. Happened. Yeah, what a crazy progression. Um God, I think you maybe we emailed or something. I can't remember, but I was looking through our like first text or something. Um I think it was because of the order. I was like late on shipping, so I like emailed you and we talked or something. I was like Oh, Damn, I remember. That wasn't I was even like, that long oh, ago or something. What's up with the painting? <laughs> uh, I didn't. I didn't expect to sell out. I remember that day. Like, I sold like almost every single drawing, and like print and everything I had up. And I was like, "Wait, I have to ship these now." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. You know, like putting your money into me when you didn't have money. Like, that's like a huge honor. You know, like what if I just disappeared, you know, quit making art? Like you took a gamble, right? So I still would have been happy. These pieces, Mm, True. I have the Nike branch piece in the, my living room. And I love looking at it, the texture on it. The, I love the wood detail. It's awesome. Thanks man. Yeah. I think those two pieces too, like, especially the Nike Seven Eleven. like when I look back at my work over the years, like that's in like, I don't know, top 10 that stands out to me. Like for whatever reason, it's just like something with that painting clicked. And it's like, oh, like I'm moving in a direction that I like. So that's crazy that you have a piece like that. Dude. Also, yeah. Looking at this piece because it is a building and like the parking. Yeah. One of the first buildings. I love it. The graffiti, the trash can. I'm looking at it right now. I'm describing it. The people, (laughs) the light inside i like how you didn't do detail inside it's just yellow yeah but you can tell that it's light like, i don't know stuff like that i wouldn't think about and thanks man i love it yeah that one's a cool one too um i think i drew i sketched out the 7-eleven background first and then i just got a printer at that time so i like 
I don't know, edit it in Illustrator or something at the time to like crisp up the lines. And then I printed it on watercolor and then painted on top of that. That's cool. So it's like like my first Dude. time kind of using digital in a painting too. I did not know that. Yeah. Bro. Little little history lesson. That's cool. Remind the people what day your nifty drop is. April 29th, nifty drop. 29th. Let's go. Let's, Let's go. do it. All right, should we wrap? I think so, right? How I think that's I, been an hour. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for <laughs> listening. Be there for the Jonathan Wolf Nifty Drop. Be it's there. his first solo Nifty Drop in NFT history. This is a big deal, man. Your first solo. Yeah. That's a big deal. Bro, I get. we'll end it on this. I feel like I'm copying you. It's so funny. I got my first solo Nifty Drop, and then I moved the next day. Like, how funny is that? I didn't dude, even plan that. <laughs> that happened to me. I just realized, dude. It's perfect. You move <laughs> and then you learn about who you are and yourself and you make better art and you explore new yeah. mediums. Dude, when the I'm homies for it. grow and have better mental health, oh my God. That's a Love flex. to see it. Ah. <laughs> Taking care of your mental health. Ah. <laughs> That's a pretty big flex. Looking at trees. Ah. <laughs> at gravel. <laughs> Street signs. Painting just cool. because. Ah. <laughs> I love anyway, it. thank you for listening. <laughs> bye bye. Art, art, art. Ooh.